Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. I'm Alana Chargaloff of Fison, and today is Wednesday, May 10th. Um, later, in the, after the headlines today, we are going to cover the Passport to Services event and also a bill passed by the Guam Youth Congress. In headlines from the Marianas Variety, Mobile Oil Marianas yesterday reduced its gasoline prices by 10 cents, the third price rollback in the CNMI in as many weeks. The regular gas price went down to 5.11 a gallon from 5.21, while the premium gas price went down to 5.56 from 5.66. Diesel remains 5.43. Shell Marianas is expected to follow suit. Tinian Fuel Services last week reduced its regular gas price to 6.99 and diesel price to 7.43. In Rota, Cabo Enterprises reduced its gasoline price last week to 6.69 and its diesel price to 9.52. According to Reuters, oil prices Oil prices fell yesterday with the market cautious ahead of U.S. inflation figures, which will be key to the Federal Reserve's next interest rate decision. Irina Slav of OilPrice.com said the major factor driving oil prices lower at the moment is economic uncertainty, with more and more analysts talking about a recession. In other news, Department of Corrections inmate Gerald Sablon reportedly used a smuggled cell phone to post photos on social media of him smoking methamphetamine amphetamine in his prison cell and Variety learned it was a corrections officer who brought in the cell phone and meth further stating a corrections officer picked up food in a bento box outside the corrections facility and was supposed to deliver it to an inmate but other officers found meth and a cell phone inside the box. As for comment DOC Commissioner Anthony Torres said the corrections officer was placed on administrative leave but it was not related to any contraband. He declined to provide additional information about the officer or inmate. There are several criminal cases in local and federal courts indicating that illicit drugs and other contraband were being smuggled into the corrections facility. And Representative Diego Camacho will introduce House Bill 23-50 today, which proposes to remove marijuana from the pre-employment test for those applying for government jobs. The bill would not apply to the pre-employment test for those applying for safety-sensitive positions or jobs that affect the safety of one or more persons, including the operation of motor vehicles, heavy machinery, emergency services, or the carrying of firearms. It would also require organizational heads in conjunction with the Office of Personnel Management Director to identify in writing all safety-sensitive positions in the government. The bill does not pre any federal laws requiring an applicant to be tested for controlled substances, including federal laws governing CNMI employees subject to federal funding, federal benefits, or federal contact, and states' employees should still be subject to reasonable suspicion and post-accident testing. Finally, from the variety, because of a few unresolved pretrial issues before Judge Arthur Barsinas, the prosecution and defense agreed that moving the June 5th jury trial is the best way to move forward in the misconduct in office case filed by the Office of the Attorney General against former Governor Ralph Torres pertaining to first class travel. After a discussion during the pretrial hearing Monday and with the consent of the parties, Judge Barsinas vacated the jury trial set for June 5th but maintained the date for a conference. Conference hearing. For more on these stories and others, pick up a copy of the Marianas Variety or visit mvariety.com. Stay tuned for your Pacific Daily News headlines and the Passport to Services event that brought multiple services out for Guam's homeless community. This is Buenas in the Morning. Join us in the month of May as we host our annual PBS Guam Pledge Drive. Tune in and show your support for quality, educational, and entertaining programming. Your contributions will help us continue to bring you thought-provoking documentaries, captivating cultural programs, and engaging children's shows. So tune in to PBS Guam and pledge your support to help us keep Guam enriched, inspired, and entertained. Viva!
Welcome back to Buenos. In headlines from the Pacific Daily News, the price of gas dropped by 10 cents a gallon yesterday. Regular unleaded is now at 485. On May 3rd, the price fell from 505 to 495 a gallon. Nationally, the average price of gasoline is about 353 a gallon, according to AAA. In other news, a souped up missile defense system is coming to Guam, but what more needs to be done to protect the island civilians should a U.S.-China conflict erupt? That was some of the talk among military officials, academics and local politicians who sat down over the weekend to talk about the consequences for Guam should a Taiwan crisis erupt. Discussion was all part of a forum hosted by the University of Guam Master of Public Administration class. Guam is often lined up as a target of Chinese missiles and war game systems simulations and mines in the national security community have dated the possibility of a U.S.-China conflict as early as 2026 or 2027, the PDN has reported. Whether China does, does intend to threaten the region and how the how to best deal with the rising power are questions for civilian political leadership in the U.S., Joint Region Marianas Captain Michael Smith told a crowd of UOG students. And relief for ratepayers and small businesses were both on the table for lawmakers as session resumed yesterday, but there's no consensus yet on whether there's enough cash on hand to fund both initiatives. Bill 75 would pump $15 million into another round of the local employer's assistance program, while Bill 83 would extend the $100 a month power rebate program through to September at a cost of roughly $26 million. But Gov Guam came into fiscal year 2023 with a balanced budget. That means any extra spending authorized by senators has had to come from tax money that's come in over what was expected. Official reports show that after setting aside money for pay raises and school repairs, GovGuam collected $10.5 million more than expected as of the end of March. Director of Administration Edward Burns said April has brought in $8 million more in excess, though that's subject to change with the final report from the Bureau of Budget Management and Research due on the 20th. Scholarships to assist public high school seniors in pursuing education after graduating are being offered by the business Moda Genos, known for selling school uniforms on island. Students who will be attending the University of Guam, Guam Community College, or GCA Trades Academy full-time can apply for $1,000 scholarships to help cover textbooks and other costs that they may struggle to pay for their first year. Two students from each of Guam's public high schools will be selected for a scholarship of $500 their first and second semester, according to Cassandra Sakdev, acquisitions manager for Moda Genos. Finally, from the PDN, the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center was honored with the 2023 Justicia Award yesterday by the Judiciary of Guam. The award has been given annually since 2008 in May, recognized as Law Month to an organization or individual for making an outstanding contribution to the justice system and rule and role of law on island. Past recipients include the Guam Chamber of Commerce, retired Judge Elizabeth Barrett Anderson, Magistrate Judge Joaquin V. E. Man Busan Jr., Erica's House, the Public Defender Service Corps, and former Chief Justice Peter C. Seguenza Jr. For more on these stories and others, log on to GuamPDN.com. And the Guam Homeless Coalition held its annual Passport to Services event at the Sag and Chamorro Fest Pack Cuts on April 21st. Polly Suba has this feature. It's the annual Passport to Services event right here at the Chamorro Village, hosted by the Guam Homeless Coalition with a number of their partners who provide vital services to those who need it the most. It all begins by getting a passport and registering right here. So on the form, we, there are questions such as, uh, where did you sleep last night? Where will you sleep tonight? Um, also household information, ethnicity of the person, um, if you've had your COVID vaccinations, and if you didn't, um, we will offer um, services to do so. And then in the back, um, there are services that we ask if they need assistance with. So that includes help finding a job, um, help with places to live, eye care, dental care, mental health. Um, and then once they complete their form, we will um, give them a passport. So that's this is basically the passport for the whole event. The Guam Homeless Coalition's Passport to Services event aims to bring various programs and services to the homeless community in Guam. 
providing them with much needed support and resources. We have agencies that are spread out all throughout the island and so sometimes um, you go to one agency realizing you also need to go to another agency and so the beautiful part about it here is that we've brought everybody together so that we can really try to address those needs taking out the transportation barrier. The Passport to Services event offers homeless individuals and families the opportunity to connect with essential services and programs including medical assistance such as health screenings and immunizations, public assistance benefits, housing and employment assistance, protective shelter information, and other social services tailored to their needs. Meals, clothing, haircuts, and bus transportation to and from the event were provided as well. We definitely have the immunizations, so we're working with the Department of Public Health and Social Services on immunizations today. Um, like I said, they can get their vitals done, there's the free haircuts, and then really it's being able to connect with your caseworkers. Um, if they are, you know, if you have a caseworker who's already working with you, trying to get you um, whatever support that you're needing, you're being able to meet with them here. Um, and then also, um, um, if you don't have a caseworker already, you, you know, you can kind of go through the intake process. So it's really like a great opportunity because a lot of times um, when you are getting support to kind of get back on your feet, it does require um, multiple agencies to be working on your case on different aspects of it. So it just um, really makes it easy for people to access those things, bringing them all together here. The focal point was to meet the needs of those who are homeless and living on the streets and also people who have trouble making ends meet to pay for basic needs and are at risk of becoming homeless. U.S. Marine Corps veteran Johnny Atulai Taitano, who came to show his support, said he was encouraged to see community support in action. Not only are the homeless and the, the, the indigent people that necessitate assistance, have the prospect of getting it, they're going to get it. The different, the different nonprofit organizations, HMI, CY uh, 671, they're not just, they're not just beating on their job. They're beating on the ground for everybody in the community. Titano said he's just as grateful to the number of veteran organizations that make themselves available to the local veterans like Westcare, HMI, and Got Your 671. On the local scene. It's, it's the ones that they say they're homeless, that they haven't been, haven't been taken care of. Well, now there's no excuse. Even in the Bible, God says, help those who help themselves. Now, I can, I, many times I've taken a horse to water, and he won't drink. So, and they say veterans are their own worst enemy. But now the trick is the women, the real angels who bring them down here to say, hey, sign up for this program, sign up for this, because they're the angels, the real heroes of God. All we are is walking lines, one foot in the grave, the other in the bucket. Along with a number of organizations and government agencies that provided assistance at this year's Passport to Services was the Salvation Army, an organization whose slogan is, doing the most good. The Salvation Army offers food to the hungry, shelter to the homeless, and companionship to the lonely among others. Here behind me is some information on our Lighthouse, Lighthouse Recovery Center, uh, where they serve uh, men who are struggling through addiction and want to be free of that. And so it's a six month live-in program um, with um, outpatient services uh, after. And so uh, we, this is only one of the ways that we help the community here in Guam. We also have a food pantry um, and we also have a family service center, which uh, the grants that we have right now cover um, homeless prevention. And it says rapid rehousing, but it really takes about a month. So it's not as rapid as it sounds. Um, so sometimes there's a gap between uh, what, what they're experiencing and the need and it's urgent, but the program itself is not made to step in as an emergency. It's more of a stabilization, and so it takes a little longer. By the way, we're hiring for program manager and caseworker uh, for, for that program right now. With the Salvation Army being a member organization of the Guam Homeless Coalition, Captain Acosta said a resounding echo within the coalition was that their clients who needed assistance through the various programs and services lack transportation to even get to their front doors. It's really hard for them to get around to the different um, organizations and services. And so this is one of my favorite 
not when we show off with each other what we're all you know funded to do but when we're actually available for the client that is going to use our services and so this is a great great way to join together and it's like a mall i feel where they can come shop and see if there's anything in our store that can benefit them and help them get to their next to the next place in their life so i love this i love also that we as the service providers can come and meet people meet our co-workers face to face and see what it is that we're doing or not doing that we should be doing um meeting the gaps right um, for our clients so i love it i really really like it for buenos guauci poly suba up next are the details on the Guam Youth Congress's recent passage of a bill affecting student service learning. This is Buenas in the Marianas. Join us in the month of May as we host our annual PBS Guam Pledge Drive. Tune in and show your support for quality educational and entertaining programming. Your contributions will help us continue to bring you thought-provoking documentaries, captivating cultural programs, and engaging children's shows. So tune in to PBS Guam and pledge your support to help us keep Guam enriched, inspired, and entertained. Viva! Welcome back to Buenos Guauci Poly Suba. Today we wear purple to help make lupus visible and to support the efforts to advance lupus research for our coworker and friend Bertha Galimba and all those fighting lupus. And now more from the Guam Youth Congress, a bill to reduce the number of service hours for public high school students needed to graduate was passed by the 34th Guam Youth Congress on April 15th. The bill would decrease the amount of service learning hours from 75 hours to 35 for next year's graduating high school students and current 10th graders graduating in school year 2024 to 2025 would be required to complete 55 service learning hours. First of all, I want to speak as the bill's main author and the principal sponsor. And as you all know, the bill simply, to simply put, it intends to create parity for our students, public high school students in the class of 2024 and the class of 2025. As you all know, right now, our public high school students are mandated by law to complete 75 hours of service learning. Uh, that requirement was waived during the pandemic, of course, in light of the situation with the lack of face-to-face -face instruction. Um, that requirement was waived for the class of 2020, the class of 2021, 22, and the class of 2023, which is our graduating high school cohort right now. Now, what this bill seeks to do is to create a sense of fairness by also waiving this requirement for the class of 2024 and the class of 2025 by making it fair by ensuring these students are not required or mandated to complete the full, the full service learning hours that they were supposed to complete during the years that there was a pandemic. Fortuno further stated that because the public health emergency ended in January of this year, students have less time in the current school year to meet the requirements in the current law that mandates required service learning hours each school year. Since we're in a bit of time crunch, as you all know, the school year is about to end and you'll have summer and then you'll have these students from the class of 2024 who are the juniors right now become seniors already. And so you already have people working overtime, double time to make sure that they meet the requirements for graduation. And as of right now, the requirement for seniors, despite the fact that they missed two years of the pandemic is still the full 75 hours of service learning that they're supposed to complete during that four year period that they were supposed to be in high school. Guam Youth Congress Representative Julie Laxamana testified in favor of Bill 3-34. She said the pandemic impacted three major school years from 2019 to 2022 and post-pandemic. Guam still felt its effects indirectly after the public health emergency ended. 
I support Bill 3-34 because it creates a fair compromise for those who are ready to help the community but have a slow start in getting involved due to other restrictions. The beauty of this bill is that it ultimately shows our children kindness and consideration after the immense shift from the pandemic. A number of representatives within the Guam Youth Congress shared that they had many conversations with high school students over an express concern over the express concern that exemptions towards completing the 75 service learning hours has ended. Representative Nathan Paz said the pandemic has only compounded the many stresses a high school a high school student already faces. Having them learn the importance of community service, we also have to be realistic with our expectations and acknowledge the hardships that the COVID-19 pandemic has placed on our high school students. Even in conversations with my neighbors who are high school students, they expressed to me that they've had transportation issues or increasing family responsibilities that has taken their attention and time away from um, being able to commit the full 75 service learning hours. Bill 3-34 passed with 14 votes and none against and has been introduced to the Guam legislature to determine if it will become law. Stay tuned for today's COVID recovery report announcements and more. This is Buenas on PBS Guam. Join us in the month of May as we host our annual PBS Guam Pledge Drive. Tune in and show your support for quality educational and entertaining programming. Your contributions will help us continue to bring you thought-provoking documentaries, captivating cultural programs, and engaging children's shows. So tune in to PBS Guam and pledge your support to help us keep Guam enriched, inspired, and entertained. Viva! An official release from the Office of the Governor of Guam yesterday shared the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services announcement that the federal public health emergency declared under the Public Health Service Act for COVID-19 is expected to end tomorrow, May 11th. Although the public health emergency is ending, federal support will continue through the proposed HSS Bridge Access Program for COVID-19 Vaccines and Treatments Program. This creates a $1.1 billion public-private partnership to help maintain uninsured individuals access to COVID-19 care at their local pharmacies and health centers. According to HSS, since the peak of the Omicron surge at the end of January 2022, daily COVID-19 reported cases are down 92 percent. COVID-19 deaths declined by over 80 percent and new COVID-19 hospitalizations are down nearly 80 percent. And the Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness Center invites the community to join them in celebrating Children's Mental Health Awareness Day during their upcoming Jibwick Jamboree. It'll be an evening of fun and games for the whole family with activities like Giant Jenga and Connect Four, making sensory bottles and other crafts, ring and ladder tosses, and, affirma and an affirmation wall with so much more. The first 100 youth to arrive will receive a free Minds Matter t-shirt and they'll also be handing out free snow cones. The Jamboree takes place from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow, May 11th at Skinner Plaza in Hagania and admission is free. Also, the Commission on Decolonization invites the community to the Fanogi Coalition's presentation of Caught Between Empires, a push for peace and security in the Marianas. This event is free and open to the public and will feature Dr. Robert Underwood and Dr. Kenneth Gofigan Cooper from the Pacific Center for Island Security. Doors open at 5.30 p.m. this Friday, May 12th at the Hilton Hotel Gallery. Dinner will be served at 6 p.m. and the event will conclude at 8 p.m. For more information, email Coalition at gmail.com. And applications for the Governor's Summer Youth Employment Program will be available starting this Friday as well, May 12th. The Department of Youth Affairs is seeking eligible applicants to earn while they learned and explore a potential career in public service within the government, legislature, mayor's offices, and judiciary. Interested applicants must be between the ages of 14 to 17, a resident of Guam, and capable of completing 30-hour work weeks for six weeks. The program is scheduled to commence June 19th 
through July 28th. And you can find the application form at dya.guam.gov. They will also be available from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday at DYA's Youth Resource Centers in Dededo, Mingilao, and Hoggett. Completed applications will only be accepted on Saturday, May 27th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Guam Premier Outlets near Best Seller. Finally, we, your PBS Guam family, invite you to join us in our annual Pledge Night, then and now. To enjoy a showcase of PBS Guam through the years, live entertainment featuring the talent and diversity of our region, and to make your generous contributions to Guam's first and only public television station, tune in to KGTF Channel 12 or the PBS Guam YouTube channel from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. this Friday night. Pledges will be accepted in person by debit or credit card cash, PayPal, or invoice. Those making donations of $50 or more will receive this year's Pledge Drive t-shirt, and donations of $100 or more will get you a black PBS Guam bomber jacket. We are so grateful for our supporters who have empowered us to enrich, inspire, and entertain the people of Guam and the Marianas with engaging educational and cultural programs for decades. Again and again, we thank you. PBS Guam wants to wish our Kids Club members a happy birthday. Ashton Garrido, Keone Kitigua, Keon Proa, Macy Valdez, Sky Mangrobang, Rianne Rechengel, Taylene Gunda, Virabel Titano, Mina Katapang, Levi Manley, Jadalyn Malari, Zion Balan, Jonathan Duenas, Marville Kabuhet, Jabez Guimbaton, Billy Rain Benaventi, Kaylin Gastillo, Marissa Jean Flores, Mika Kanata, Penelope Tovez, Chase Pangalinen, Leilu Manabusin, Kaylin Ningeroys, and Eve Basingal. Happy birthday! Thanks for tuning in today. Have a happy Wednesday, and don't forget to catch us live at 9 a.m. tomorrow on KGTF Channel 12, the PBS Guam Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or the PBS mobile app. Buenas and half a day, Marianas. Buenas is brought to you by Guam Police Department Recreational Boating Safety Program, Department of Public Health and Social Services, Division of Children's Wellness, Bureau of Child Care Services, Guam Economic Development Authority, Premier Dentistry, Pacific Daily News, and the Marianas Variety.